Hi everyone, Ross Mellanacker here. I'm part of the product management team, and today I'd like to speak to you all about uh, a new set of functionality that we have just released. As of 6.0.3, we now support password vaults for authenticating um, OS and database connections. Uh, specifically, uh, for OS uh, support, we now uh, handle Unix, Linux, and Windows connections. And for databases, it would be Oracle, SQL Server, and ASC fall under a standard support. Uh, we will, of course, for virtualization, add all of the uh, general supported databases in upcoming releases. And then for masking, we will look to add the uh, password vault support in the near future. Now, in terms of uh, password vaults, uh, we support two of the industry leaders, which are CyberArk and HashiCorp. And I'll go ahead and jump into the demo now. And before I go too far, I should mention that uh, you would want to, uh, before doing any of these registration steps, you would want to reach out to your uh, password vault team. Uh, within your enterprise and uh, make sure that you take into account any special requirements or registration steps that are necessary. Uh, they certainly would be the ones that would provide the registration information as well as uh, the location of your credentials for us to uh, be able to access um, within the vault. Uh, from the setup app perspective, you'll notice that under network authorization, we now have a section that is uh, for password vault registration. And this is teaching uh, the Delft extension how to communicate with the vault. In this case, we have both the CyberArk and HashiCorp uh, pre-registered vault for this demo. I'll hop into CyberArk. Both are similar in terms of the experience. Uh, however, there are some nuances. For CyberArk, uh, you would simply put a vault name, and this is how this specific vault will be propagated throughout the engine, a host name, so the location of the vault, and the port which the communication will be going over. Now, we have a cyber-specific feature here, which is app ID. And this is something that, uh, in order to add an additional layer of security, uh, CyberArk has uh, applications pre-register themselves within CyberArk. So this is something that your CyberArk team would do um, just to make sure that when we make a call out, we would have to put in the app ID that uh, Delphix has been given. Uh, that goes in conjunction with uh, certificate-based authentication. So you would need to provide the certificate and private key that is also provided to you by the CyberArk team. Now for HashiCorp, we, uh, the difference here is that there are multiple authentication methods. Uh, we chose the most general cases, so token, certificate, and app role, which is a HashiCorp specific uh, token generation um, mode of authentication. Um, now there are many additional low types of authentication that HashiCorp offers. If uh, your HashiCorp team requires one of those, please reach out to your, um, your account team and uh, we can set up a feedback session. Uh, for this, the purposes of this demo, we've um, registered a token. Um, now moving down the UI, there is the same vault name and host name uh, and port requirements, uh, you would also need to provide a token. You'll notice that there is no app ID, uh, but there is similar levels of security that is provided by um, HashiCorp. It's just uh, accomplished in the authentication method if you need it. So that would be app role. Uh, this is where you would uh, establish a application specific token. Uh, that would have a very similar functionality to app ID. Next up, we're going to hop into the management app and we'll go through the registration screens for 
uh, both, both the environment add and the uh, link D source now workflows. So for the purposes of this, I have a Windows and SQL Server uh, demo set up. So we'll hop into environments first. And we will go to the Windows source host. And this has already been pre-configured. Uh, previously, you would have only seen a username and password option. For Unix-based hosts, you'll also have SSH keys. Uh, but of course, Password Vaults uh, is a far more secure version uh, or means of authentication than all of those. So in this case, uh, you would provide a username. And this is for auditing. Um, we would simply use this uh, username when uh, we would include that in the package when we uh, reach out to the password vault so that uh, you add an extra level of accountability uh, to your workflows. You then select the uh, pre-registered vault from the pick list, and then you would enter a query stream. Uh, and this is simply, this is first of all given to you by the CyberArk team. You would put in a safe, a folder, and an object to be able to access the right credential. Um, I should also say, please uh, keep in mind uh, the uh, object um, mentioned here because uh, it will come into play for the database connection. Now I'm going to hop over to the SQL Server D source. All right. So this, you have many options here. And this is because uh, in addition to password vaults, we have released um, support for Windows authentication, uh, which is why there's so many different options here. Um, previously, uh, if you were a SQL Server user, you would only have database, uh, the database user option uh, for username and password. But I'll also call out that environment user and domain users are now options due to um, the Windows authentication uh, method here. If you did not um, have that, you would end up using the, or if you did not want to take advantage of Windows authentication, um, you would use a domain user with a vault credential. Um, in this case, uh, it's a very similar uh, workflow. You have the username, the CyberArk, uh, you would choose the specific um, vault that's pre-registered and enter the query string. Uh, because this is a also a SQL Server source um, or a SQL Server use case, and Windows authentication is in play. Um, we actually ended up having uh, the exact same query string because it's the same set of credentials here. Um, however, if you are looking to, say, use Oracle with Linux, um, you would certainly have separate query strings. And that is it for the registration. Uh, a couple of other details that I would like to add in terms of the mechanism for this um, common questions that do come up, um, how uh, does this really come into play with password uh, rotation? Because generally when you have uh, a password vault, that uh, an extra level of security that generally is mandated by uh, InfoSec is to rotate your passwords. Um, simply put, we do not care how often you rotate your passwords because we uh, every single time um, Delphix goes to uh, well, needs to authenticate these connections to do an operation, we will reach back out to the password vault and uh, retrieve the credentials. So it, you can rotate away. Uh, we will just grab whatever credential is most relevant uh, or most fresh, I should say. Uh, so that will not matter. Another question that does come up, what happens if we reach out while the uh, credentials are being uh, rotated? Um, Specifically for CyberArk, there is a special feature that um, will, um, in for this very use case, will have the application hold until the rotation is complete um, before allowing us to be able to reach out and uh, grab that credential. Um, now, 
If you have any additional questions beyond this demo, please feel free to reach out to your account team and um, they will forward on any questions that uh, you have onto me and I would be more than happy to answer them. Of course, you can always hop on to uh, community.delphix.com and ask your questions there. Um, otherwise, uh, best of luck and uh, looking forward to working with all of you on onboarding your password vaults. Thank you.